Hi, good morning. Uh, my name is Mark Davis. I'm not a doctor. Um, 13 years ago, this month actually, I just finished my uh, external beam, chemo uh, radiotherapy, and chemo for a T3 rectal tumour. Um, and was about to have my first fraction of Papignon. I was only 31 when I got the cancer. As you can imagine, it was a bit of a shock to me, my friends, my family. And it changed all our lives forever. Uh, the focus when treating me had just been on the tumour itself, not the fleshy bit around the tumour, the patient, the person. Um, I wanted to not just live, I wanted to survive. Some of the challenges faced we have in Manchester, even though our clinical outcomes are really good, uh, is the really high numbers of cancer patients and the premature deaths resulting from that. Issues with poor and late diagnosis is really masking the fact that in the UK we have some of the best cancer treatments in the world. We're just not getting the right treatment to the right people at the right time and continuing that treatment for as long as it is needed by the patient. Even though I'm a scouser, um, I have been working in Manchester for a little while now with uh, the Christie and Manchester Cancer, working on everything from health and well-being. I was the chair of the Late Effects Commission Board and their survivorship team. Um, and really with the survivorship, we call it living with and beyond. Patients and carers are very much the centre of what we do at the Christian and Manchester Cancer Scene. And we're looking at all aspects of the patient journey. Because it might well start with diagnosis, but it doesn't end when you leave the hospital. Uh, I'm going to introduce Jack now, who's going to tell you what we're doing. Thank you. Uh, I'm uh, Jack Livesey. I'm an oncologist. In 2007, uh, Greater Manchester's one- and five-year survival work for cancer were worse than England's and worse than comparable cities. Basically, we had a fundamental problem with our cancer care, and that was essentially due to late diagnosis and lack of standardised pathways between the 15 hospitals involved in our cancer care. And patients moved often between hospitals up to usually four but the joins between those hospitals and the steps were never really well thought out and the pathways within each hospital were different. In addition, there was no ownership of the whole. People may be concerned about their own bit, but they didn't care about the bit before and they didn't care about the bit after. And there were no identifiable outcomes for individual parts, just the outcomes at the end of the survival, which, you know, the horse has rather bolted by that point. There were pockets, lots of pockets of excellence, but no comprehensive excellence. And the pockets of excellence were often lost in the noise of the whole. So what we propose is a new model of care where a single lead provider becomes the accountable, and that's the point, the accountable organisation for the whole of the cancer care. And the whole of the cancer care pathway will be both patient-centred, I know easy words, and clinically led. And I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. Everyone in the pathway is involved in this, and everything in the pathway is involved. So everyone from public health, local authority, primary community secondary care, academic, we have big contacts with Manchester University, all the trusts are part of the Manchester Cancer Research Centre, and education. We have a huge school of oncology. When problems are identified, we can focus on those for education and learning. And when I mean everything, I mean everything. I mean from... Um, uh, prevention, to screening, to diagnosis, to cancer care, to survivorship, to end of life care. So what have we done? Set up 20 pathway boards that are clinically led and the boards is mostly clinical with at least, two, well, usually one but often two patients. The leaders for each of those pathway boards were, com were competitively appointed from any one of the, the partners, any one of that part of that organisation. There was a patient on the interview panel and the patient had a right of veto on the applicant. They have defined the pathways or started to define the pathways, agreed objectives and aims, agreed measurements, I'm obsessed with measurements, measurements and metrics both on clinical outcomes and patient recorded outcomes, which I think is really cool. And they've agreed what measures mean by success. And we've set up various pilots in various of the pathways, and they're extrapolatable, if they're successful, to the whole pathway as a whole. Also, because you do actually need managers, we have provider boards which involve the, all the CEOs and commissioners, and again, have two patients on as representatives. And it's all not really one trust, even though there's one actual trust running, you know, as, as, as the um, taking the responsibility, if you like. But everybody is part of this as part of the Manchester Cancer Organisation. 
And the idea is ownership of all of it by all. So we're all responsible for each other as well as our own parts. And what's been achieved? We're right at the start of the journey, but the recent one-year survival rates have come out for cancer, and Manchester is now above the national average for England and above the national average for uh, comparable cities. Nigel. Thank you. I'm Nigel Guest. Uh, I'm a GP. Uh, as a commissioner, uh, and specifically uh, as a lead commissioner for Greater Manchester CCGs in collaboration with uh, NHSE, um, it would be an understatement to say that um, there have been significant commissioning issues um, with local providers who, understandably, for some time now, have been largely competitive um, rather than um, cooperative or um, indeed collaborative. There's been a lot more focus on secondary and uh, tertiary care provision um, with significant success, but not fully considering the full end-to-end -end pathway requirements, nor the Greater Manchester System um, whole uh, provision requirements. The proposed Vanguard lead provider model is supported by commissioners and all providers reinforced by agreements uh, and governance under Greater Manchester devolution arrangements. There is a common shared desire to reform uh, cancer care provision in Greater Manchester and beyond. This model will enable the Christie, as the lead provider, to coordinate cancer care services and provision and to promote full end-to-end -end pathways, as you've just heard. And by that, I do truly mean right through from education, workforce engagement, prevention, screening, diagnosis, treatment, survivorship and end-of-life care. There is extensive engagement with patients and carers, as you've heard. The beauty of this model is that Public Health England and local public health are also engaged in a proper way, promoting the prevention and early intervention detection agenda. Through an increased and sustained focus on prevention, we can gradually shift the emphasis of care further towards that end of the spectrum. I need to wrap up now. Okay. Improving survival and quality of life. At the same time, we'll be able to shift costs from the expensive area of the spectrum and ensure a more costive expense delivery model. Roger. Thank you very much. Thank you. We do have to stick to the time, so sorry. So can I take questions, please? We've got five minutes of questions. Right at the back, uh, next to the woman in yellow. Sorry. Thank you. Good morning. Stacey Hunter, Chief Operating Officer from Airedale FT. Um, Difficult question, just following the lead we've been given this morning. Of all the services we've got, cancer's had enormous support from strategic networks, senates. I've lost count of the number of things. Why haven't you done it anyway, and why do you still need a vanguard? So thanks very much for that question. I think... Um... <laughs> I think, I think that enables us to just catch up slightly. I mean, some of our colleagues had a bit more time yesterday, I think. Um, why we want to be a vanguard, why, why we want to be a vanguard is really important. We think there are four things that are important to our programme. The first is support for our new approach to commissioning. The second is support for the measurement and assessment of this new care model that we're embarking upon at the moment. The third is the development and of replication and spread tools, because we believe our approach, our new commissioning and provider approach, is replicable across other specialty areas. And the, the fourth is we want some financial support for programme management and monitoring and development of the programme. Thank you. The, the gentleman in yellow down here. Thank you. Um, thank you. Good morning. My name is Fred McInerney. I just volunteer in the, a social enterprise in uh, Gloucester, really, working with uh, a range of diverse people. I'm very privileged to do so. 
Can I go back to the uh, the patient involvement, which you explained and whatever? I was really uh, pleased to hear. I think at some stage that that was the veto in there as well, really, which I thought was was really good if I heard it right. Um, a has that ever happened? That's one question. And secondly, really, <clears throat> before we get to the veto aspect of it, really taking Sam's point about not being polite and getting under the skin of your presentation, really. What I'd like to know is, when we're going along this journey and the patient reps or the, what we're hearing from people in communities say, actually, you know, we don't really see it this way, what have you done, if anything, to change that view and how have you done it? Can I do the patient? So, no, they didn't Perhaps we can ask Mark to answer the, the question about patients. As patient representative, I, I think the cumulative effect of different voices is help, helping the whole pathway. I don't think this is just associated with cancer. Uh, I found that when I came in at point A, diagnosis, shuffled on to point B, which was hospital, shuffled on to point C, which was the pharmacy, kicked out with some fiber gel and said goodbye. And there's more to it. And one of the things, I've been working with these guys for about three, four years now, and uh, it, it, it's a cumulative effect. No one voice is going to be louder than the other, but the, the storm of voices, like yourself and all your colleagues, and there's loads of us patients in the Manchester area, just, you know, putting our hands up and going, why is that happening? Why is that happening? And it's about linked up thinking, isn't it? It's about logic bridge. Treat the patient as a whole, the whole journey. I'm 13 years out, I've still got late effects of pelvic irradiation. If I'd chosen to have a stone, we'd have a different pathway. If you've got long-term needs, you're going to have a different pathway. You have to treat the patient and their journey. And that's kind of what we're trying to do here. Not treat the disease, treat the patient. And I think that's where patient voices and what you're doing is really useful. Not just to be annoying and say, I don't want that to make a point, to be constructive and help in the process. Thank you very much. Unfortunately, that's the five minutes up. So can I have a big round of applause for the team from the Christie, please?